Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be answering some of your questions in the comments of my most recent video, What Psychosis is Really Like, Part 2. So there's a few questions in here. Some of you have also made some good comments about exactly what psychosis is like. So I thought it's definitely worth sharing them to you guys. We shall start with how come so many patients who had a psychotic experience always think they are Jesus? Why not someone else? Why is it always Jesus? <laughs> it's true. Um, it's a very common thing. I didn't realize how common that actually is until after I'd my experience and i have done some research, looked at other videos on YouTube, and read some books. But as you know, I can only give you my own personal experience and why I thought I was Jesus. I remember the exact moment that I first thought that. Um, I'd been drinking on a Friday night, I'd been smoking weed and walking back from where we were out, we are actually just playing pool, in like a pool hall, back to my mate's house. And the onset of the psychosis started coming on as we were walking back. So I felt like this power and this connection between myself and like the outer universe, like the wider universe. Some may see that as like God, but I definitely felt like the power was coming from above. Um, so I was walking down and I felt like I was on a mission and, and like say connected to this higher power so i associated that with god and then i thought right me w walking on earth i must be jesus and before um so maybe like two or three weeks leading up to it this may or may not have had an impact but i was listening to a lot of kanye west he brought out a new album so don't know what the album was back in 2019 probably called like yay or ye or something like that wasn't it um, and there was a lot of religious stuff in there. Obviously, Kanye West got bipolar as well, and he was talking about Jesus a lot. He's obviously that connection, the Yeezy stuff. Um, and that was maybe ingrained in my mind already. So, and having this, this connection and feel like feeling like I was being sent from God to carry out a mission and a purpose was why I felt like I was Jesus. And that, I felt like, I probably felt like I was Jesus, but wasn't necessarily just that. And I think this answers your question, so why other patients say they're Jesus, is because it is the closest representation of someone, it's easy for them to explain to someone else how they're feeling or um, what they believe their purpose is at the time. So they feel like they're uh, extra powerful, they have special powers compared to other people, that might sound crazy, but you genuinely feel like you can heal people just by looking at them or that spiritual um, energy that you give across to someone else. Uh, just on the back of that saying about spirituality, you do feel a heightened sense of that. So I'm generally not a very spiritual person I would say. like believe in like good energy and like you can get that from other people as well as like bad energy could sap your own energy but in terms of like religiousness and um anything like that like candles or crystal balls not me um but i think that could be it i know that it's only it's not everyone because i know someone that isn't a Christian and he believed that he was Allah as he was going through psychosis so okay question one down then we have this is a comment if you've seen the movie Surge which I haven't you can get a pretty good idea of what psychosis can look like from the outside internally it all makes perfect sense and anybody who questions you is simply an obstacle or an enemy or stupid or whatever very true that's right it's very clear in your mind it makes so much sense like you say in this comment I'll have to watch this film but it seems like you're the one that has crystal clear thoughts you're so sure that you're right and everyone else is deluded 
whether that be from the media sorry my neck really hurts by the way slept bad in it last night I'm like can't really turn that much um, but everyone else yeah, has been deluded like say from the media or they don't understand things just like you do you've got a clearer sense on the world which is exactly what it's like the third comment is one of the craziest parts for me was how I experienced language a simple and random phrase like the door is open suddenly seems to explain the whole functioning of the universe everything is meaningful and is hard to make sense of it later that's very true I, I think this is again a common thing so from what I've heard and through my recovery from care coordinators if you're going through psychosis one of the common things is that you'll follow signs so that could be like some graffiti that's on a wall and it's a message and it's like oh follow here or you're like you're curious to see like where will that take me that leads you on to a lamppost that lamppost's got a certain sticker on it and you read into that sticker whereas it's probably just an 11 year old just slapped it on there on the way home from school you're thinking even if that was the case you're thinking why did that 11 year old not even think but why did they put it on that lamppost and then you start to go what what was they was there was something inside them that which made them do that and then you lead on to that and then that it just takes you down this spiral and people can get lost and go missing when they're in psycho psychotic episodes because of this um but you really do think that everything is um, part of a greater plan people may not be aware of it but there's this higher power which could be a godlike figure or a spiritual in the universe that, that everyone is um, leading down this this path or this purpose to get to a certain somewhere we don't know if that's true or not it may have even been true but maybe true now that's just the step <laughs> but yeah that's that's definitely a thing when you're in psychosis it's very much like that when you're out of psychosis you just think that's just um what's the word coincidence okay and then we have another comment can you remember it all another question sorry did you rekindle with people you burnt bridges with during psychosis period there's a few questions here how long did it take you to recover from psychosis to fully recovered yes i can remember most of it i think the only bit that i can't is when i was heavily dosed up on the meds and i may have i felt like what people say is like a dream state um and it's the similar sort of thing of like when you're drunk that you can't remember from the night before but i feel like i, I can remember most of it if i was to sit and think through my two sections of 28 days each I can think about how it first came on at being in A and E, and then how I got to the hospital, and then my first moments there and being crazy. The time between then and sort of coming round, like out of psychosis, but within the twenty-eight day section, my thought or memory seems to go a little bit, and I don't know whether that's because you're in the same environment, same four walls, seeing the same people every day, so it's not much is changing so I don't know whether that's what um, goes out of my memory or whether that's just because I, d I don't remember it and the medications were strong um, yeah so yes I can remember it all did I rekindle uh, with people that I burnt bridges with during the psychosis yeah and obviously when people go through psychosis they say things which they wouldn't usually say but that's probably because this it feels like this weight on your shoulders which i spoke about before is lifted so you feel like you can say anything you want and i personally think that's a good way to communicate um not being nasty to people but speaking your mind and being clear and communicating honestly and openly if someone's offended you you don't agree with something say it up front the germans do this very well i recently discovered from a trip to berlin um just be open up front and I know that when I was going through psychosis, especially with my close family, I was where I'd kept this weight on my shoulders. When that was lifted through the psychosis, I probably blurted out way too much and that came all at one force. Luckily, they're close family and they understood this because I was going through 
this and they gave me um, not a second chance but they didn't take it too personally and they were great stood by me so I apologize when I came out of it um, but that's that's obviously family but in terms of friends um, it was uh, my friends were great in a way because I had my close friends that came to visit me but my general sort of mates like they did well to keep their distance and only um, got in contact through my close friends that came to visit me so I was lucky in that sense I didn't really burn bridges through psychosis I more cut ties with people that weren't serving me through my recovery in psychology so I realized that there were there's some friends that were leading me down to down dark habits and not serving me bad influences or um, I didn't feel great around them I felt anxious and we realized that actually should I really be friends of them energy sappers people that I was yeah helping a lot but not getting anything in return and it was that was a waste of it felt like a waste of my time particularly I uncovered all that and I decided that actually I'm going to be more selfish in my time and the relationships that I've got with people and make those barriers and cut them off and I didn't really when I say cut them off I didn't ever say look I'm not talking to you anymore I just let things like fizzle out things you grow apart as you get older and I think that's definitely feedback I can give to others that may know friends out there that that aren't serving and they're not they're not great for them they're bad influences and it's very difficult when you've got one person amongst a group of cl close friends to drift apart from that person that you know what's right for you and you want to create that barrier but to do that you just have to be really patient and it takes years and I'm still working on it now so it's not going to happen overnight don't expect you to fall out with that person but just make a start sow the seed and then over time you'll be uh, you'll get to where you want to be every day will get easier I promise um, how long did it take you to from psychosis to fully recovered I would say a good couple of years but it's not necessarily the time and I don't think you because the lady that's saying about this is talking about her son also recovering good couple of years like I say but it's the, the the patient that's it's the effort that you put in and it's the quality of care and I think it's how how much you were impacted by your psychosis and, and there's a lot more to it than that um, yeah and that, so just to lead on from this one bit stuck is it unfortunately this lady said my son started from depression August 2022 got better with antidepressants but as soon as he stopped in early Jan 2023 he started going manic led him to psychosis in April 2023 then got discharged June 2023 since then has had no motivation isolated himself in his room can you see the timeline it's been too long when is he going to get better depressed mum here completely understand and I want to give my love and support to you because I know how hard it must be for you going through that as well as it was for my family it's still only early though like I said it took me a couple of years and we're, we're like just over a year from that point medication can have a huge impact so I'm, I'm not saying it's a medication that's caused him to be isolated and stuff like that but a change in medication can be good a reduction looking at the care but all I can suggest to you, as, as you say, a desperate mum, is just to always be there. Don't necessarily be um, encroaching on his privacy, but just so he knows that you're there and you're all ears, you're listening, um, but listening with intent. So really, like when, when he's saying something, really listen, be silent and, and understand and agree and try and get to, try and help him express. Um, or what he feels or what he's going through at that point in time as opposed to suggesting things giving advice I think you should do this I think you should do that you're going to get that initial barrier and rejection next comment is did you get rid of some relationships similar question during that time that you thought were disturbing the peace you managed to achieve like blocks of people or something I think your experience is close 
closer to hypermania than psychosis. May agree to, but I was diagnosed with having psychosis, so we'll go with that. I've already answered the crate and that block, that distance between people. But when you say about blocks and people or something, it actually makes me think. I went for a period where I muted and unfollowed the vast majority of people on social media. So I first deleted my whole Facebook account, which was actually really difficult. I don't know why they make it so hard. Well, I do, because I want to keep you on there. But I deleted my whole Instagram, TikTok, all socials, and I just went in a complete blackout mode, which was nice for like inner peace, because you, you realize that how much pops up and these dopamine spikes and distractions that you get all day from your phone. Also, obviously, social media is terrible for this, but the comparisons you make to other people, um, there was that. And I wanted to start from scratch again, start fresh. So deleted all those accounts. Then when I re-got them and started to follow friends and family and suggestions and things like that, I started to get this feeling of like anxiety come up again. And it's just saying that I've got less than a minute on my SD card, so I better hurry up. Um, yes, so I muted the vast majority of people, like I say, stories, posts, and just took a back step from that. Cleared some room off the SD card, so we're back. Okay, so I have a final comment. Thank you for sharing your experiences so kindly, Mike. I've had two pretty severe psychotic breaks and I liken it to being in a walking dream. I experienced the typical delusions, mostly religious and paranoid ones, hallucinations and gaps in my memory. It's like being high on cocaine and I feel very energized and even euphoric at first until the abject terror kicks in. Precisely, I mean, I completely understand. You do feel euphor euphoric, um, you do feel that that buzz, that high, like you say on cocaine, you feel energized, you feel you feel good, you feel great, and you can't deny that. I know that there's there is other videos out there, and there's some like infographics that show this like confusion, this stress, that like your mind's all over the place. And to me, it wasn't like that at all. And I know from others that experienced it also say the same thing. So that's why also I want to make these videos and talk about it and share this information because it's not accurate what's out there. I don't think. Um, when you say um, until the abject terror kicks in, for me, it didn't, um, but I did have one point when I was suicidal and that, but I don't know if it was because I'd just come out of hospital and I felt like, right, I've been through that and I'd come back round to myself and then been ashamed from what I'd been through and how I'd exposed myself to the public and the things, embarrassing things I was doing. There was that, but I could live with that. But for me, it was when I was on a medication called Haloperidol and I could not function at all. So my body was just completely shaking. I couldn't sleep. And I was calling my mum like into my bed. So as someone that's like 22, a grown adult, not being able to sleep without their mum. Uh, and I just, I needed her to just calm me and talk to. So I'm really grateful for everything she done when I was going through that because I probably kept her up for a good few nights in a row. But I, I was, I think I was like yelling out um, and I, I felt suicidal because I was like, I cannot go on like this. I'm, I can't function, I'm slow. I'm like, like just, yeah, I was, I'd put on weight and I just didn't like it. Luckily we got through that. If it wasn't for my mum again contacting the NHS and my care coordinator, luckily she got me off those medicate off that medication on something called olanzapine, where I was much better, so I, I wasn't shaking as much and vibrating, but it meant that, well, I was still tired and sluggish and put loads of weight, but at least I, my thoughts were a bit clearer. Um, so I didn't necessarily have the terror, but there was that stage, but I can understand that once you've been through that and, and you've, made yourself public that you'd gone through that and people think you're crazy then then it kicks in but again that's one point in time and then you can slowly recover and come round from that and if people understand that it's just it's not your fault it's just you went for a bad patch and it's all about how you rebuild yourself from there and things take time they really do I mean I still work on things every day 
um, there's things that you can always improve like like your, your bedding to make you sleep better your diet your, how you socialize with people openness honestness therapy exercise your job there's so much which builds builds up into this one thing which obviously goes on in your brain but you can do it keep going thanks guys you guys are great I love your comments they're fantastic and I feel like day by day we're making making progress so keep them coming make sure you subscribe if you haven't already really helps I get a little kick off it little buzz so thanks and speak to you guys soon